All right, so I'm going to show you guys um, some like overly simple way of doing this, um, and it's going to be a little redundant. But like, if you're really in a pinch and you just need to like slap some um, storefront or something on your project really quickly, you can do it this way. Um, <clears throat> so basically, what you have here um, is a set of surfaces. If you look at that, it says five values, all untrimmed surfaces. That's what subsurf or iso trim does. It literally splits it into these pieces. Um, so what's interesting about that is that you get individual cells already cut that you don't have to deconstruct to, to get to. Um, you will have to deconstruct them later. But um, the, the individual cells um, are going to create a redundancy in, in um, how many lines you're working with. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But uh, let's go to Surface. And we're going to go to Freeform. And uh, we're going to use Pipe. Okay, We're going to keep it really simple right now Okay, and uh, not worry too much about the uh, exactness of the architectural profile. And we're just going to use Pipe to, to create a really quick like storefront mullion looking thing. Okay, um, so. Let's drag in pipe and let's put it over here. You'll see that I do this often. Like I, I know the tool I want to use, but I don't necessarily know all the information that's going to lead me to that tool until I grab the tool and start filling in the gap. Okay, that's kind of how I use this software. So now I've got pipe. It's going to create a pipe surface around rail curves. Um, so it's going to ask me for the base curve, the radius of that pipe, and um, what type of cap value you're, you're going to have. Um, this came from surface freeform. Um, so I've got to feed in the curves from these surfaces. So in order to get those curves, I have to deconstruct it. Yeah. Um, so let's go to surface analysis and we're going to bring in deconstruct B rep. BREP stands for boundary representation, which is like the imaginary representation of a volumetric form or a flat form. So you can use it for flat surfaces as well as volumetric ones. Um, so we're going to uh, plug this in, and then I'm going to group that so you can see where it is. This is from surface analysis. <clears throat> okay. so. Um, anytime we use deconstruct B rep, it's going to give us vertices or points and then edges, and then it'll also regurgitate the same surface, but we don't need to do that um, for this one. Um, but uh, so we're going to take the edges and we're going to plug that into the curves value. So now you can see what it's trying to do. It's creating pipes along that surface um, where all the edges are. Um, so now we need to create a numerical value that's going to give us the radius of that pipe. Um, so for this, I'm going to say 0 to um, 1.00. Um, and I want to point out something real quick. We are working in architectural units, right? Many of you, I've already noticed, accidentally started your files on millimeters. You need to be aware of that because whatever number you put in here translates to whatever units Rhino is operating in. Does that make sense? So if you're working in inches and you want something to be one foot, then you need to use the number 12. Okay? Or if I'm working in feet like I am right now and I want something that's one foot, I use the value one. Um, so I chose uh, 0 to 1.00 because I wanted two decimal places and I didn't really need to go any higher than a foot at, at a maximum. So I'm going to plug this into radius. Um, let me turn off some of the old stuff, and then I'm just going to elevate it till it looks like what I want it to look like. Okay, so something like that, three or four inches. All right, so um, the only other thing I need is um, the type of cap. Now, this is a little different than what you've seen so far. This is an options menu. It's a different type of input. It's going to ask you for a numerical input, one, two, three, so on and so forth, that's going to define how, it, uh, how it's set. So like here it says 0 equals none, 1 equals flat, 2 equals round. 
you need to, if I want them to be rounded at the corners, like, uh, like up here, see how it's cutting it off like that? That's a no cap end. I want it to be round so that it, you know, kind of creates like a complete geometry. So I need the value of two and I'm going to use a panel to do it. There. Now it rounded it out and made it like a storefront. I mean, it's round. It's not really like a storefront, but I'm trying to show you guys like quick ways that you can get some pretty cool value out of this. So now um, we've got a fully working uh, storefront system that I can just go through and change all my subdivisions however I see fit. What questions do you have? I know you're going to want to like follow through and, and get this piece in, um, but I do really quickly want to show you um, how powerful this can be. Um, so if you're doing kind of the same thing here, let's say uh, we have multiple versions of this. That is not how you spell copy. Um, Let's say we had multiple surfaces and we wanted to do this for all of those surfaces. Um, it's really as simple as saying set multiple surfaces and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, enter. It'll run. Oh wait, it broke. Um, <laughs> graft. There we go. Um, so yeah, even I make mistakes. Um, so there's a prime example of, of when you need to know the difference between flat structures and grafted structures. Because when it was flat, it was reading through the surfaces in sequence and then trying to apply cells to them and subdivisions to them. Um, but once you graft it and it creates a separate group for each of those surfaces and then runs this operation on each of those groups, that's how that works. Okay? So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hide. Now we've got a pretty cool facade that I can now change very intelligently. Clear enough? Okay, so why don't you get to that point and then uh, we'll play around with a couple of other things.